Jesus said unto Saul, look at Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. Whatever you do, positive or negative, to any child of God, you are doing unto Christ. Or looking at Acts chapter 9 verse 4. And he fell to the earth and had the voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He was persecuting the saints, but he did that, and Christ took that personally. Saul, you have done that to me. Now, if we have the love of Christ within us, and we have experienced that love of Christ, how do we exemplify that love of Christ towards him? We do it towards the children of God. We're looking at John chapter 14. John chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If any man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. The love of Christ should keep the words of Christ. Chapter 15, verse 9. As the fathers loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Don't allow any day to find you in, in bitterness. Don't allow any day to find you in selfishness. Christ loved every day and every moment of the day. Whatever happens, smile it off and love. Whatever happens, overlook it and love. Whatever happens, push it aside and love. And demonstrate the life of Christ within you. And whatever people do, don't take it personally. Pass it on to Christ. They have not done it to you. They've done it unto Christ. Pass it on. And just do what the Lord has told you to do. And uh, love. Verse 9 again. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, this is my commandment. That she love one another. How? Tell me out loud. As I have loved you. That's the measure. Not the love of Abraham, not the love of David. Those were great, great, great men. I will never say anything to belittle them. But you know, Christ is greater than Abraham, and Christ is greater than David. Don't you ever go back to the Old Testament and say, This is how Moses loved, and this is how David loved, and this is how Jonathan loved. Forget all that. And Jesus said, as a father, has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. And then he says in verse 12, This is my commandment, that she love one another exactly as I have loved you. Verse 13, Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his love for his friends. Lay down his love for his friends. What have you laid down for your friends? For the friends of Christ? For the disciples of Christ? You ever lay anything down? Sometimes you're right. This is my right. This is my right. And we're holding on to that. That's why we have accidents. A motorist is driving. It's on the wrong side of the lane. And you are coming. And you are right. He's driving on your lane and he's coming towards you. You're going to have head on collision. I claim my right. I'm not going to turn for anybody. This man coming is not on the right side of the road. He should know that. And I'm not going to turn for anybody. And you keep on driving and he keeps on driving. Well, come and visit both of you in the hospital. Don't claim your right. Give up your right. You know there are times in this life we have to give up our rights. And just say, I lay that down for Christ's sake. Because Jesus Christ laid down his life for his friends. And there comes a time in your life when you come to the test. And Christ is saying, 
do it like I did it. I give up your right and lay it down for me. You will do it. Greater love has no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. I pray God will give us the grace. In First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 8. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that says he is in the light, and hateth his brother, is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. And there is none occasion of stumbling in him. You love, you live in love. There will be no occasion of stumbling in you. Other people will not stumble over your life because you live by the principle of love. Everything. First John chapter 3, verse 14. We know. That we are passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. Here is the mark. Here is the evidence. Here is what makes us to know we are real children of God. If I find it impossible to love the brethren, if I find it impossible to love those who hurt me, if I find it impossible to love those who do evil against me, if I find it impossible to love any child of God because they took something away from me, how should they do that? If they were real children of God, they shouldn't deprive me of what belongs to me. If because of that, I cannot find it possible to love them. It's a mark I should set down. I'm not a child of God. That's what the Bible is saying. It's saying, in this place, we know. Here is how we know that we're children of God. We know that we're passed from death unto life. Because we love the brethren, he that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to do what? Well, to do what? lay down our lives for the brethren. Look up brothers and sisters. The life is greater than the clothes. Am I right? If we are to lay the life down, we cannot lay our clothes down for the brethren. Our life is greater than the money. Is that right? If we, if we cannot lay our lives down, how can we lay down? We cannot lay money down. How can we lay down our lives? Whatever we have, the possession. If you cannot lay down, and you're right in particular, you know, this is selfish generation. I'm not talking of church now. I'm talking of the world. And that's why you'll find everybody is running after, this is my right. You don't give it to me, you are not going to live at peace till you die. That's the world. If you cannot lay that right down, and you keep on claiming that, and you spend all your life defending self, how are you going to show that you are a child of God? It says, hereby perceive we. Hereby we understand that the love of God, we understand the love of God because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. We'll do it in Jesus' name. It says in verse 17, But who so has this was good. And seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his powers of compassion from him. Why do we do that? I helped people before they repaid me with evil. I tried to help people before, and you know, they just hurt me and destroyed me. I helped their children, they ruined my children. I'm not going to help anybody anymore. That's Satan talking from that heart. You know, when it's Christ talking from your heart, Christ will say, don't mind what they do. They nailed me on the cross. I kept on praying for them. It was in Jerusalem that they rejected me. I told my disciples not to leave Jerusalem. 
And I told them to tarry in Jerusalem until the power to preach salvation to those in Jerusalem will come upon them. And it was in Jerusalem that 3,000 became converted on the day of Pentecost. Do as I've done. If you have the love of Christ in you, you will not be retaliating. It says, but whoso has this was good, and saith his brother, have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, and dwelleth the love of God in him. Verse 18, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed, and in truth. We are going to love. And we'll do it in truth and indeed in Jesus' name. First John chapter 4 verse 17. First John chapter 4 verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. We'll be bold in the day of judgment. When all the drop of blood in your body is full of love. When your veins are full of love. When your brain, you're always thinking and planning how to love people. When in your heart, in your spirit, in your soul, what can I do to love more? What can I do to express my love more? In your mind, in your spirit, in your soul, you're always planning how to love. And you are demonstrating that every waking hour. Then you have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Verse 18, and there is no fear in what? You know, when you love people, you don't fear them. Even when they are trying to hurt you, you say, he doesn't know I love him. If I demonstrate love to him, he'll stop wanting to hurt me. He doesn't know I'm for his good, I'm for his profit. He doesn't know the Lord has sent me here to be a blessing to him. That's why he's suspicious. Somebody else hurt him before. Somebody else did something wrong to him before and is looking at me. Maybe my height is like the height of the people that hurt him before. Because of that, he's trying self-defense. That's why he's trying to hurt me. I'm going to love him. You don't fear people when you love them. You just know that the, the love is absent in their lives. You want to supply what you don't have. When you love people, you stop fearing people. When you start loving people, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment. You know, when you fear people, you stop loving them. You also want to protect yourself. You don't want to preach to them or pray for them or, or talk to them or do anything with them. You don't want to befriend them or come near them because... Uh, they're going to hurt me. They're going to destroy me. No, they're not going to destroy you. God is on your side. God is always on the side of love. I said God is always on the side of love. And if you love, nobody will hurt you in Jesus' name. And it says, He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loveth God, love his brother also. We well, love in Jesus' name. We're well, looking at Jude verse 20 to verse 25. Jude from verse 20. But she beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, Keep yourselves in the love of God. God will help us. We're going to keep ourselves in the love of God. Number one, the love we have experienced, that love of Christ will keep on flowing in our hearts. And then the one we express will keep on expressing that love. Will not allow any selfish, personal, private consideration to hinder us from love. Ah, they will misunderstand. If I do that, don't worry about them. Who are they? They will misinterpret my action. If I show love, don't worry about them. Only think about Christ. 
is when you are thinking too much about what people are going to interpret, how people are going to interpret. That's why you are not able to express the love of God that is bottled within you. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a difference. On others save what fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. While you are manifesting that love, you still hate sin. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, God will keep you. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer that this love, the identification mark, the indisputable mark of true discipleship, that God will bring it up in us. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. He loves you. Whatever you have been in the past, God loves you. Whatever your life had been in the past, even until now, God loves you. And it is the Lord that wants to see you saved. The Lord that wants to get you to heaven. The Lord that wants to forgive your sin. The Lord that wants to wipe out all the evil that you have ever done in your life. And the consequences of sin he wants to take away. God loves you. And he doesn't want you to perish. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him. Will not perish, should not perish. It shouldn't perish, it shouldn't perish. But what Christ has done. With your punishment he has borne. With the load of your guilt and condemnation he has taken away. You shouldn't perish. Just simply come to Christ and say, Lord, in my heart, I come to you now. In my heart, I come to you now. In my heart, I receive you now as my Savior. Take all my sins away. Take my guilt and my condemnation away. I rejoice in your grace, your love, your mercy. By grace am I saved. Give your life over to Christ. Let his love dwell and abide in you. Experience that love. He died for you. To take away your sin. He died for you. To reconcile you unto the Heavenly Father. God is not angry at you. He loves you. God does not want, to per want you to perish. God is not saying, I must punish him by all means. No. He doesn't love punishing people. He loves pardoning people. Forgiving people, drawing people unto himself. He has a loving heart. And he's saying, Turn away from your sin and turn to the Savior. Then will you experience the love of Christ in you. Since you have experienced it, express it. Let it flow from your heart. 
to the nearest people to start with at home. To your wife, to your children, to your husband, to your children, to your parents. Let that love flow to other people. Stop going about with bitterness or anger. Relax the muscles on that face. Stop frowning. Wear a smile and love. Demonstrate it. Do something. Show something. That shows there's no bitterness in your heart. What you have in your heart is the love you have experienced.